thank the Lord. And I tell you, I was, this scene, I was praying and reaching out. And I just heard that voice said, if you have faith, there's a grain of mustard seed. Thank God. Twice. And two of the Gospels. Oh, hallelujah. Ain't he wonderful? Man, that ain't much. That ain't much. It's just, man, it's one of the least seeds there are. Amen. But it, it, that'll move mountains. Yes, sir. That'll move mountains. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, that'll move mountains. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I probably got a thousand of them little bottles. Oh, somebody said, why? Well, I just like to magnify faith, you know. Every time I see one, I think about faith. Glory. Faith. Don't you appreciate it? We're going to give you a chance to help us in the offering. And then I'm going to talk about that. I thought, boy, I done had this thing worked out till you know thought I had it all worked out and then the Lord uh, changed every bit of it you know I just appreciate how many appreciates the word thank you Jesus glory don't you appreciate the word Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you can help us in the offering, I tell you, somewhere you'll be rewarded. Everything you give is helping us get the message of Jesus. <laughs> Glory. Sometimes, uh, Sister Terrell, I had to pray for her knees today. She stays on her knees sometimes, much as four and six hours praying. For these meetings, thank the Lord. I tell you, if, if Bible said men, and that means women too. You know, God don't make no difference between a man and woman. Yes, sir. Thank the Lord. We were, when Jesus come, He redeemed us from all that law. You weren't know, just talking about the law of the city and the law of the country. He's talking about the law of the Old Testament. You know, He redeemed us. And said he give us a new and a living way. I believe we need to keep them. But I don't have to read the Old Testament to keep the whole thing. I like to read it. And I like to read about them holy men. But I tell you. That they were just the start of the build upon them. And the apostles. Apostles first now called we in the New Testament the new apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ then the head of the whole thing and when we get in that the Bible said the gates of hell can't prevail against it you know can't prevail against it I'm going to tell you something it's going to take more than just just being a good person. Pharisees was good people. Sadducees, you couldn't touch them. I said you couldn't touch them, but they missed it. And the writers, scribes were the writers of the Old Testament. Yeah. They missed it. Amen. You know? And I will tell you, scores and scores of churches after the good news came in, especially to this country, you know, a long time ago, that's why our forefathers got out of them countries over yonder is to come over here to America because they wanted to worship God freely. And that's what Trump and, and all that bunch and Obama passing them laws today that don't mean a hill of beans. It ain't going to work. I said, he passed the law, we can come in, take your home, take everything you got. 
but he's a liar. God ain't gonna let that happen. Amen. God will kill him if he has to. Amen. America ain't, ain't reached the world yet. Yes. Did you know we the only country in the world has put out more missionaries, Amen. more preachers yes. than all the rest of the world put together? Yes, God, Jesus ain't sitting up on the stone. I tell you what he's going to do. He's fixing to drop some folks into hell. Fire and brimstone. Yes, sir. I mean, this gospel. You know, someone called me today and said, Oh, you better pray. They take it. I said, No, the gospel in America. There ain't another country in the world trying to get the gospel. The Bible said, First, before anything, can, Jesus can come first. This God, not this any old kind of trash. This God. This gospel uh, of these, this King James. Amen. Of the apostles. Not these apostles today. Them apostles. We ain't built upon these apostles. Today we built upon the apostles 2,000 years ago and the prophets. We ain't built upon these prophets now. We built upon the prophets back under Isaiah that prophesied a virgin shall conceive. Hallelujah. Glory. I said Isaiah that, that made the way. We didn't ever believe Jesus was born of a virgin. That man over there called Isaiah in seven and other places had a predicted and prophesied that a virgin, that's impossible, shall conceive and bring forth a son and he will save his people from their sins. Thank God. You know, Jesus didn't have one drop of human blood in his body. The blood comes from the male. And maybe it was a virgin. And his blood, that's the reason. Ain't no other blood. You can go out here and bow down to preachers and, and use their name and blah, blah, blah. Ain't nobody can remit your sins but Jesus. You can get them pray for you. Ain't nobody can save you but Jesus. His blood is the only blood of the cleanse you. I said his blood is the only blood of the cleanse you. It's, it's the only blood that, that don't have no human in it. <laughs> And they proved that by the egg. Medical science did. Egg more has, they say, got that rooster's sperm. And if you'll notice, it's got a pin drop of blood in that sperm. And if that ain't in it, it won't hatch. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I studied all that. You know? Government tried to stop me, but put me in jail one time for four years. But that's the best thing ever happened to me. I got over half a million dollars out of it when it proved they was wrong. <laughs> and that got me. <laughs> and I didn't keep it either, man. I went to every country I could. You know what I looked up? I laughed at them government folks. I said, goody, 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 goody. I could have got more. They wanted something. Them lawyers wanted that. That's what I got. They got more than I got. <laughs> and I want to whoop them for getting more. <laughs> well, let's praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that gave me a time to read every kind of Bible there was. Thank you, Jesus. Got a warden saved. Got the two meanest people in the world they put in there saved. Murders. I'm talking about a man that killed over a hundred people. I'm, I'm, God came back and tell you, he killed 150 people and he's never going to get out. One day I was praying and I was next to him and man, he was a big old guy too. If I ever find him, I'm going to whoop him. <laughs> he's up here in New York somewhere. <laughs> if he's still alive. He said, I'll, I'll take a stick and knock him out and then whoop him. <laughs> and he called me over, he had to stay in the cell all the time. I didn't. He called me over there. He said, Preacher, is in that stuff true that you talk, you talk, you think you're talking to somebody up yonder? I said, Yes, sir, man. He said, Well, I don't believe. But said, Are there anything to that? I said, Yes, sir. And I showed him how God healed my leg. And, and he said, Do you think that you can pray for me? They got me. I ain't never going to get out of here. He done been there six, seven years. They got me in here 60 years before I can go up and said, you look at me, I'm already 60. <laughs> I said, if you give your heart to God, I mean, God will reverse that. Now God kill me right now, he tell you the truth. 
right down here in Dallas, Texas, to federal prison. I run my hand through his bar there. He, you know, had a little door there. You could hand him water. And I run my hand, join his hands. Spirit of God come out to me. And a voice spoke through me to him. Said, Washington, said, the news is getting up and they're going to release you. They're going to take everything off your record. Yes. And you're going to be free. And I said, God had just spoke to me. And that'll let you know there is a God. About seven days later, they, I was out all the time, you know. And they had me run around everywhere praying for people and all that. They knew I was innocent. They just... And there was a bunch of preachers that done it. You know, trying to stop me. But it's the best thing ever happened to me. It never did get on my record. Man, I was down there uh, uh, running the airs everywhere. They had me going all over the city, you know. Man, I was, after a while, I seen him come out that door of that prison, went down and got in the front seat of a taxi and drove off. And I said, Jesus. <laughs> and I went up there and I talked to the head man. I said, what in the world? Why'd y'all turn him loose? He said, man, did you know? He said, something come up, they took, just reversed everything. Took it every bit off. I said, well, that dirty dog. I said, he spoke, told me by. I prayed for him. For God, they're going to raise his record. He didn't even. <laughs> Went all the way back to New York. Man, I started to go hunt him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I guarantee you, he knew it was God. Yes. One of the richest men in the world he was. Second richest man in the world. Jesus. Thank God. And that shows you faith. That shows you that faith as a grain of mustard seed. And I believe that somewhere I'll meet that man because he'll know that God had to do it. He was an atheist. But he knows had to be God. The little preacher boy can't do it. But God. God. I mean, there's nothing God can't do. So like you hear me tell the story how there's on that jumbo jet that came out of uh, Europe well, I was over there and we stopped in Miami had to go to Argentina for a meeting and we got on that jet and there's a woman who was I didn't know she was on the same plane she had a weary she was from over there and she attended my meetings over there but I didn't know she was on that same plane and I was getting on that plane first and I felt a finger in my back and I heard her speaking in that language over there and also turned around and she also spoke in English and she looked at me she said plane won't crash now won't go down I said I had such a weary but when I seen you get on man I felt peace we got on that plane and we flew seven hours going all the way to Argentina but the pilot come on and said, we're going to have to land over here at some country and take on some fuel. Yeah. And I thought, well, I didn't know he was going to go there and stop. Got there, first thing he said, he didn't say nothing. He, he didn't want us to panic. Got up there, he'd come back home when he pulled up. He said, we're going to have to change plane. Said, one of them giant engines come off and fell into the ocean said it is a miracle of God that we all didn't go down but said something up yonder you know I knew what it was that little woman from Portugal said plane can't crash man if I was worried like her I wouldn't even got on it myself <laughs> man I'm glad she has one time man I'm glad she was on her I might not be here that was her faith. Yes, Boy, we got there. She hugged my neck. She said, man, oh, said to think about that. Yeah. If you ain't got on here. <laughs> yes, yes. See, that's how powerful faith is. Yes. It moves mountains. Yes, yes. It turns water to wine. 
How many remember in the Bible where they, they was having one of them special get-togethers and nobody brought no wine? He turned 200 gallons of water to wine. Jesus did. Thousands. First, I had a, one of those uh, meetings like that, you know, in Waco, Texas. Not too long after I started, over 50,000 people showed up there for that special, uh, you know, communion. And they wanted me to conduct the thing. I didn't want to do that. And you can believe this or not. I don't care. God burned me witness. The women back then, they didn't do stuff like crackers. Back then, the women fixed a special uh, bread you had to eat. There's no salt or no, you know, what to call it. Uh, what do you call that? No ingredients at all. That's what they get for communion. And they had, and but nobody brought the grape juice or the wine. We had four barrels, brand new barrels that we was there at Waco, Texas, over 50,000 people that they was going to put the trash in, but they hadn't done it. Man, oh, they got there, well, we can't have it. And here I was, man, all of, I'll be on my way to South America. They want me to stay, and the, the, at that time we had the jet. And I thought about that pagan way, and I said, fill them water pots up with water. <coughs> I said, if it could happen 2,000 years ago, it would happen now. Yes, they reached down and filled them four barrels of water oh. with oh. barrels with pure water. Watch. I stood and raised my hand to God. I said, Jesus, there was a pagan wedding in your day, and you turned it to wine. You can turn this. I don't care what you just Don't turn it to liquor. I said, you turn it to grape juice or wine, anything. Hallelujah. And believe it or not, that water turned b color of wine. And we had that communion. And that let me know I don't care if the Bible said if you can believe. I don't care if you believe it or not. It happened. God is a powerful God. You hear what I'm telling you? Amen. I mean, ain't nothing God can't do. I don't read the NU was around, but there was a time in America uh, you couldn't go nowhere on Sundays on, on kind of a, a gas shortage or something. Does any of y'all remember in that time? Well, I had to go to South Georgia, and I forgot to fill my car up. And I had a car that, that leaked a little bit, and I carried four or five gallons of water back there. And I got down there, and I... Uh, and I forgot to have a car. And I still I had to preach in South Georgia, way down there from over in Alabama. That was when I was a state evangelist all over the country. And I had to be it. Man, I thought about that pagan wedding. I went out there and got that water that I had for leakage. And I said, God, if 2,000 years ago you could turn the water to wine, I got to, I've got to get to yeah. down yonder to this special meeting I took them four gallons of water put them in that gas tank lift my hands up and made it about 30 or 40 miles there's a station one in Michelle station went in there and I told that guy I'm a preacher and I got to have some fuel I got to be and and but I said I want you to dream that radio, which you fill it with gas, and I appreciate it, and he did. I said, I'm a minister, and I got to be down yonder at a special meeting. And it just slipped up on me. I know y'all, it's an emergency. And so he went and <laughs> got him a, a can and took that plug out of the bottom of the tank. And there's about, out of that four gallons of water we put in, there's about two gallons of it run down in a pan. Man, he said, man, it's a miracle you got here. <laughs> yes. Thank you. He said, he said, you got two gallons of water. I said, I did have four. <laughs> of course, they didn't believe it. <laughs> he said, this is a miracle that you've got here. I said, it is a miracle. He drained it, 
and he filled it up for us. I ain't gonna charge. I told my priest, I ain't gonna charge you for this. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. I told man, he probably, man, he just went left. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, our God is powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> ain't nothing too big for him. Ain't nothing too big. Come and help us if you can. I tell you, I just feel like, man, I've, I believe if some of y'all guys get the devil to hold him back, <laughs> I'd whoop him. <laughs> I would never just get mad if it wasn't a seed, you'd cuss him. 